Father Gordon Leghorn used to say, if you want anything done, you got to do it yourself. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, you know, I like uh, the part of that song, he sends the sunshine and the rain. You know, oftentimes we enjoy the sunshine, but we don't enjoy the rain that much. But without the rain, we'd die. And uh, it's just another reminder to me that God's greater, God knows. And, and uh, I used to get so mad when I was a teenager, I'd wash my car, you know, when you get your first car, you know, you're proud of it, you know, you'd wash it, clean it up, and you'd spit, shine it, and it was ready for the show, and here come a rain shower. And boy, you'd get mad at that rain shower, and you'd think, why, every time, got to rain, who, what's this rain, who needs this rain, you know? And you look back as you get older, and you realize the foolishness of youth, you know. God knows what we need. Well, I'm thankful he knows what we need when we need it. You got your Bibles tonight. Go with me all the way through your Bible to the book of Exodus. Shouldn't take you long to get there. First book is Genesis, the book of beginnings. And then if you'll just turn a chunk of pages, you might find Exodus. Exodus and then chapter 32. Exodus 32. While you're looking for that, a um, uh, lady I work with, I think I may have told this before, but I think it's worth telling again. Uh, her grandson that she raises, he's about Lily's age, maybe a year one way or the other. But uh, it's been a couple years ago now in church they were learning about uh, how the Spirit teaches us and how God will talk to you and lead you and, and uh, tell you what you should do and stuff like that. And they was in the car and uh, getting ready to go home and he, he just real quiet for me. He said, Mama, he said, I think God's telling me we need ice cream. <laughs> She, she kind of chuckled at it, but you know, it was innocent, you know, so they stopped and got an ice cream, and, and uh, uh, on down the road, you know, he had done finished his, and they, they had got something, but they weren't really eating much of it, so they, they weren't very much done with it, and he looked up there, and he got quiet again, he said, Mamma, I think God wants me to eat yours, too. <laughs> she said, she said, that's when I... I thought we got to talk to him about, uh, you know, what, what, when God's talking to us and, and when it's just our feelings when we want something, you know. And, uh, and at a very early age, we've got to learn the difference between feelings and, and other things. And I want to talk to you about that tonight. Um, and uh, the title of my message is quite grim, but I hope we'll understand this because it's something we need to talk about. Exodus chapter 32 tells us the story of the Israelites and the golden calf that they made while Moses was up receiving the commandments. I want to preach to you tonight on the failure of feelings. And I want to read this and then we'll talk a little more. Exodus 32 verses 1 through 4. If you've got it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Our God, we stand in your presence now. Unworthy to do so, but thankful that we can. Thankful for the songs, thankful for the fellowship and the time to pray. We're thankful for praise reports. We're thankful for the good things that we can talk about. And I'm thankful that we just don't request prayer, but we also share uh, when the, you do the great things that you do. And God, now as we stand before your word, we pray you'll bless its reading to our hearts. And we ask God that you'll have your way with it. Help us to see truth, see through ourselves that we might see clearly and see you. Now, Father, lead those that are lost to Christ. Lead us all closer to him, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Be seated. Thank you for standing with me. Some of the scariest words I've ever heard as a pastor. Now, take a second to think of what you might think that is. Some of the scariest words you think I've heard as a pastor. Met a lot of people. Prayed with a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people go through hills and valleys in their lives, and their walk with God. But I'll tell you some of the scariest words that I've ever heard is when someone uh, goes through something or something happens and, and uh, they tell me, I ask them, you know, how did things work out? Or whatever I ask them and the, and the word I get back from them is, I feel great. Now 
Now, you wouldn't think that's a scary thing, but to me it's become a very scary thing because I've learned over the years that feelings can get you in a whole lot of trouble. I've learned that our relationship with God isn't based on how good we feel. Have you ever met anybody like that? When everything's good and they're happy and excited, man, I'm walking with God, everything's great. But those same people, when they're not feeling very good, it's almost like God's over here somewhere. You see, our walk with God should not be based on how good we feel. But oftentimes it is. And that ideology or that philosophy has spilled over into the churches of today. The better it feels, the more God there is. And if it don't feel good, we got to change something up. And that has created a culture of worship of feelings more than a worship of God. Now, am I against feelings? No. Am I against happiness and joy? Am I against those things? Lord, not at all. I think they're tremendous things. But when it is what determines our standing with God, when it is what determines how our relationship with God is, we're in trouble. Because if God is only close when I feel good, or if I'm only worshiping God when I feel good, what's the rest of the time? Uh, Dad and I uh, haven't had many conversations about church music, and that's something typically pastors and and uh, uh, whether it be a song leader or a minister of music, as in his case, that's something you talk about, you know, because you won't be on the same page with stuff. And, and uh, you know, if you're going to pastor a church, you want to kind of know what the, the idea is for music and worship and things like that. But um, luckily, we kind of see eye to eye on things, and, and if not, I'm wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> you just can't tell your father he's wrong, I don't guess, you know. The Bible says honor your father and your mother, and I guess I'll probably get in trouble somewhere. But that's one thing that I learned from him at a young age is that uh, if we're not careful, worship turns into a how good can we feel as opposed to how much glory can we give God. Now, is feeling good wrong? Is being happy wrong? Is enjoying something wrong? No. But if it's the primary focus, then the primary focus has not then become God, but it has then become our feeling. And what I've heard today and something that troubles me great is when people will attend a church and they'll say, man, it felt good. Okay. Again, not against feelings, but tell me about what that meant. And they'll say, well, the music, man, the, the music was uh, upbeat and it was uh, faster and it had rhythm and it, and, and it had that stuff and it just made you feel good, you know. And then that turns into their experience with God. Am I against music? No. But I am against emotionalism. I am against substituting worship of God with human emotion. I want you to feel good, but I'm not going to want you to feel good at the expense of you getting closer to the Father. You see, if we follow after feelings, we can get ourselves in trouble. If we follow after feelings, we'll end up chasing earthly things and we'll miss out on that which God wants to do. And I don't think there's a better example of that than what we see here in chapter 32 of Exodus. You've got a group of people who have been led out of Egypt who have uh, seen God do wonderful things. They've seen Moses do some wonderful things. But they've come to an impasse. Moses has gone up to the Sinai. Forty days he's spent up there. And as this is progressing towards the end of it, the people start to operate on how they feel rather than what they've been told. That's the danger today. When we stop operating on what God tells us, when we stop believing and living and taking what God has said and then we start operating on what's going to make us feel better or what's going to help me feel differently, we get into big trouble. The church today has decided that we would rather make people feel good and churches like ours, you know, uh, where people's not uh, standing up and, you know, I don't know how else to say this, but standing up and doing the more modern style, you know, with the hands waving and the jumping and stuff like that. If we're not doing that, man, you guys are dead. You, man, you guys have missed it, man. You, you don't go to church somewhere like that. Come over here, man. We're alive, you know. It's a, it's, a, it's a happening thing. You'll feel good when you leave. My friend, why don't we feel good when we leave here? Is it not the same God in theory if they're preaching from the Bible? Then what's different? My friend, listen to me. The songs that I sing, the songs that we sing are not to make me feel good. 
They're to lift up the precious name of Christ. When I'm sad, he makes me glad. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. The lifeboat soon is coming. All these songs we sing, they're, they're not to make me feel better. They're to lift up him. But let me share something with you. The more we'll lift him up and forget about us, the better we'll feel. But what we've done is we've looked at it from a reverse angle. They said, if I'm not feeling good, then God's not, you know, he's not a part of this. We're wrong. And Exodus 32, again, I think teaches. Now let's just jump right in here. And again, I'm not preaching against feelings. I'm not preaching against being happy. I'm not preaching against joy. I'm not preaching against those things. I love those things. I try to be a very happy person. I try to be a very cut up type of person. Uh, sometimes to my detriment. People really don't take me seriously because I, I do like to laugh and I kind of make light a lot. And I think some people think that's a, a sign of immaturity or weakness. But I just like to smile. Life's too short to be so serious all the time. I'm not against those things. But when they take the place of my Lord, then we've got a problem. Let's just look at this. Look at verse 1. I want you to see, first of all, in verse 1, I want you to see the danger of feelings. Look in verse 1. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. Now, what's happened? Well, he's up there with God, right? God's writing on the tablets explaining the law to him. When Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. Now, what happened? Something changed, right? They were all for following God out of Egypt. You know, they got to the to, uh, Red Sea and they were all for getting across that thing. All the things God had done, they had been for it. But all of a sudden now when Moses has been gone for a couple of weeks, they're like, I don't feel good. I don't feel the same. I don't feel as excited as I did when I crossed the Red Sea. I don't feel as hopeful as I did when we left that Egypt. We got to do something. What do we do? I don't know. What do you think we should do? Well, you remember back in Egypt, we used to worship them bulls, you know, and that was a worship to God. They, to the Egyptian gods, that's what they're, uh, they'd worship a bull. That was their worship to a God. So we had fun at those things, man. We had a lot of wild times. You remember, it felt good. I know. Let's do that. Aaron, make us a God. And I take it a step further. They say, which shall go before us? For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we won't know what's become of him. They say, we don't know what's happened to him. He's probably dead. He's up on that mountain dead. Squirrels is eating him and all. We don't know what's happened to him. How are we going to get somewhere? Hey, I know. We'll feel better if we've got a God. We'll feel better if we've got something we can see. We'll feel better if we have something familiar, Aaron. So make us a God. And you'd think Aaron would have stood up and said, no. My brother knows what he's doing. My brother's with the Lord. Don't you hear the thunderings? Don't you see the quaking of the mountain? God's still there. God's still there. Moses is still there. They're having a talk. Moses will be back. Y'all better get your hearts right because God's coming with a message. That's what Aaron should have done. But what Aaron do? Aaron said, okay. <laughs> Look what happened in verse 2. Not only the dangers of feelings, when we start to operate on what makes us feel better, we will leave what God has said to do. Now, does following God feel good all the time? Let's be real honest right here. Answer this to you real honest. Now, does following God by the letter of his word, does it always feel good? No. Let's just be honest. And if you want to say yes and lie to yourself, go right on ahead. God sees you lying. Okay? Now, it should Every preacher stood up here and said, you want to be happy? Follow the word of God. You'll be happy. And I believe that's true. But I'll also tell you this. There's some things that God tells us to do that uh, I don't always find enjoyable. Can we be real? The Bible says don't hold a grudge against your wife. I wish he had not wrote that. The Bible says love them that hate you. I wish he had not wrote that. The Bible says if he smacks one cheek, give him another. I wish God said if he smacks one, give him a right hook. If he's dumb enough to try it again, choke him. <laughs> God didn't write that. There are things in this book that are not always going to give you a warm and fuzzy feeling. There are messages that will be preached from a pulpit that are not always going to be, Amen, preacher, that's good preaching. 
Some messages are going to be like, Dear Lord, preacher, can you stop? You're killing me. Believe me, i got to hear them too. <laughs> it ain't just you kids. Not everything when we follow God is going to be warm and fuzzy. But when we want that and when we think that's all there is, when we think that following God is always a good, warm feeling, when we don't have that, we're going to go and find it. And when we go hunting after it, you're going to find some things that are not of God. Their warm and fuzzy was in a God of gold. Now look at verse 2. Not only the dangers of feeling, but the delusions of feeling. Aaron said unto them, Break off your golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives. Now here's one of the problems. They're in their boys' ears. That's a shame. And of your daughters, and bring them to me. Aaron said, uh, all right. This will help. Aaron was a modern church pastor, if you look at this really closely. Aaron was a, uh, the pastor of a New Age church. The people come to him and said, this is going to liven this bunch up if you do this. And he said, all right, we'll do it. You wouldn't believe how many churches today are in ruins because of Aaron-type leadership. Post-Sinai, or pre-Sinai, I guess. Where somebody's come to the mouth of the church and said, Hey, preacher, if we'll start doing this, we'll get more in Sunday school. Hey, preacher, if we'll start doing this, we'll get more to come to worship service. Hey, preacher, if we'll do this, we'll get more kids in here. Hey, preacher, if we'll do this, be more lively service. My friend, when you start chasing the feeling, you might be careful. You might just do like the song says and get hooked on it. When you get hooked on a feeling, you'll do anything to chase that feeling. My friend, serving God is not about making us feel good. It's about giving Him what He is worthy of. Aaron said, all right, if you think it'll work, let's do it. Bring me your earrings. Bring me the gold. Verse 3 says, And all the people break off their golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. You see the delusion here? The delusion that said if we do this, it's going to make us feel better. If we do this, it's going to give us what we need to keep going. Who's going to lead us through the wilderness? Moses is dead. If we're supposed to keep going on to this promised land you tell us about, how are we going to get there? Something's got to keep us going. Well, let's just make something. We've got to be careful we don't do that, folks. Because the delusion of feeling will say, when God's not answering my prayer like I need Him to, or God's not answered his, my prayer when I need Him to, I'm going to answer it myself. God, I don't know what you're doing, but i got to have an answer right now. <laughs> you know, you see, when we don't feel at peace, we're going to try to find something to make us at peace. And we've got to be careful because that thing we go hunting after might not be of God, you see. And the delusion here was that this is going to help us. And Aaron bought into it. We read this story and we think, how crazy, how foolish is this? Would you believe I've been approached with some very odd requests for things to do at our church? Now, you don't know some of these people, and I wouldn't tell you who they were. If you guessed, I'd tell you wrong. But I've had people tell me, you'll do this. People will come. You're, why don't you just do this? People will come. And I've had some things told to me that I think, you know, I'll pray about, you know. Hey, I'm not, you know, not a bad thing, but something to pray about. But then I've had some people tell me things that just made my skin crawl. <laughs> and said, what is wrong with you? Somebody said they bring in snakes. I'd liven them up. Amen. Lock the doors, boys. Here we go. You know. Rest assured, if there's a snake in the yard on this 14 acres, I'm out of here, boys. It's on your own. <laughs> I hate those things. But the delusion is that it's going to make us feel better. My friend, listen to me. There is nothing that's going to make you feel better outside. God outside of Christ that is what's going to make you feel better and if there is uneasiness in here don't go out there trying to satisfy that let God be God just wait all Israel had to do was wait as I see this story as it unfolds God's almost done with Moses because right after all this happens God tells Moses hey they've corrupted themselves you better get down there so it tells me that an encounter between God and Moses was at, a, at, at its end. All they had to do was wait a few more days. Maybe a few hours for all I know. But they got uneasy. They got antsy. They got tired of waiting on God, so I'm going to do something myself. I'm going to make me feel better. Folks, listen, that's the delusion of feeling. Just because something makes you feel good doesn't mean it's right. 
Drugs make you feel good. That don't make them right. Go talk to the man that's hooked on them. Go talk to the woman who lost everything over them. They don't, they'll make you feel good. But oh, the damage. Oh, the torture. The delusion of feelings. Just because it feels good doesn't mean it's right. Now, danger and the delusion, I want you to see the devastation of feelings. Look at verse 4. And uh, he, Aaron, received them at their hand, and he fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be our gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. It and that it. Now God brought them out. They prayed for 432 years for God to deliver them out of Egypt. God raises up a son by the name of Moses. Moses comes, stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pharaoh, set free. God answered a prayer 400 years. They got to a sea and God parted it. He sent ten plagues. All the miracles. And they make that calf and they say, this is what got us out. This is what helped me. This is what made me feel victorious. This is what helped me in my time of Moses. Yes. And boy, we'll shake our heads at that. And I shake my head at it because it seems un unfathomable. But my friend, it's as real today as it's ever been. God plus something equals happiness. <laughs> God plus nothing. Okay? It's devastating. Now, if you continue to read on, I'm not going to read it. I hope maybe you'll read it if you just refresh your memory. But um, Moses is told... Verse 7, get down there. The people who give that idol credit for what I've done. Moses, God says to Moses, I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to start over with you, Moses. Moses pleads for him. He said, don't do that, God. What a legion thing. They'll think you just let them out here for mischief, that you're going to kill them. God, don't do that. Don't do that to them. God said, all right, I don't want them. Then Moses gets down there and sees what's going on. He throws them tablets and busts them. He's ready to kill them. <laughs> They have gone completely mad. They're naked. They're running around doing all kinds of ungodly things. Calling it worship. Saying, this is what makes me feel good. Who cares what you think? Moses, who cares what you say? God, really, you're wrong. Sit up there in heaven all you want. You're wrong. You don't know what makes me feel good. Oh, the audacity. Adrian Rogers used to say the unmitigated gall. Moses got so mad he burnt that thing he made him drink it. <laughs> you know why? Because feelings failed them in the valley that day. Listen to me. If your feelings will fail you if you're living on a feeling, don't look for feelings. Look for Jesus. You may not feel good all the time. You may not feel good today. You might not feel good tomorrow, but soon you will feel better. God will lift it. God will give what you need. And it may not be right now, but don't go around trying to think that happiness is godliness, and if I'm not happy, God's not near. So if God's not near, I've got to feel good, so I've got to do something to feel good in order to make God be near me. It's a convoluted mess, and you'll get into the messiest message you've ever seen in your life. My friend, listen, if it's a hard day, you stay with him. God might be just a, another prayer away, another day away. All Israel had to do was wait a little longer. And they would have got what they needed, you know. The failure of feelings is dangerous. I, God wants you, do you think God wants you to be happy? Answer me. Do you think God wants you to be happy? Sure he does. I told you that verse this morning. Do you think God enjoys your misery? Answer. Do you think God enjoys your misery? you think God's up there smiling? So that's what you get. <laughs> But I told you this morning, and I'll tell you again, it's God's plan. You see, And the feelings is not what I'm after. Do I want to feel good? Yes. But I know that if that's my goal in life is to feel good, it's going to take me down some roads I don't need to go down. In the hard days, stick with God. When it hurts, stick with God. Because tomorrow's another day. 
weeping might endure for a night. But the joy comes in the morning. Amen. So, don't chase feelings. If you're not feeling good, don't chase after things that's going to make it worse. They that wait upon the Lord will renew. You wait on them. Let's stand together all around the church tonight.